Today's lesson is called Dialogue Focus, Building an Emergency Kit. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff. And my name is Helen. Now, I just realized that I don't have an emergency kit. Hmm. What would happen if there were a big fire in my house? Do I even have a bucket that I could fill with water and kind of throw on the flames? I don't even think I've got a bucket. I better get started on building an emergency kit. I think I need to do the same thing because I think most of us don't really like to think about what might happen during an emergency or that even an emergency could happen, whether it's a medical emergency or a natural disaster that could happen and we need to prepare for it so that we can survive it to the best of our abilities. You know, we want to think about happy things all the time. But it's also important to prepare for the worst in life. That way you can just sit back and enjoy life. Because you already know when something bad happens that you're prepared for it. I couldn't have possibly said it better myself. All right, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break. But when we come back, we'll start discussing part one of this month's dialogue focus lesson. It's called Making a List of Kit Items. And we'll see you guys right after this. Building an emergency kit. Making a list of kit items. Kyle and Rita are discussing the merits of building an emergency kit. Man, that article on natural disaster management really got me thinking about how unprepared we are. I know. We should put together an emergency kit. Then we won't be so helpless if a freak accident occurs. Good idea. I'll put together a checklist and then we can see what we're missing. I looked online and most websites say that we should have at minimum a three day supply of water and non perishable food, a first aid kit, a battery powered radio, a flashlight, and a multi tool. Oh, and a whistle. There are also some optional extras. That sounds like a good list. I'd also add a power bank for a cell phone. Done. Now let's check to see what we're missing. We definitely don't have enough bottled water, and we'll have to buy some canned and freeze dried food too. Let's go shopping this weekend. Freak accident. Dennis injured his leg in a freak accident. Dennis的腿在一场怪异的意外中受伤了。另外，除了上面的意思，这个字还可以当名词，指怪物、怪胎。举例来说， the strange animal was looked upon as a freak by the children when they saw it. 这个奇怪的动物在孩子们的眼中被当成怪物。再补充两个包含 freak 的片语，第一， freak out 表示吓坏，而 freak somebody out 就表示吓坏某人。我们可以说。Donna freaked out when she lost her ring. Donna 发现弄丢戒指时吓坏了。或是, The scary movie freaked me out, and I had a hard time sleeping last night. 那部可怕的电影把我吓坏了。害我昨天晚上没睡好。第二, Control Freak, C-O-N-T-R-O-L, Control Freak, 表示控制狂。例如, Carl's girlfriend is a control freak. Carl的女朋友是一个控制狂。再来我们看到名词 checklist 意思是清单, 像是, I'm used to writing a packing checklist to help me get ready for my trip. 我习惯写一张打包清单来帮助我为旅行做准备。接着我们看到单字 we keep our non-perishable goods in the basement. 我们将可长久保存的商品储存在地下室里。另外这个字去掉自首。N-O-N 就成了反义词 Perishable 指易腐烂的 易变质的 例如, Raw meat is perishable and should not be left out of the refrigerator for more than a couple of hours. 生肉容易腐烂 没放在冰箱里的话 不能超过两三个小时再来我们看到形容词 Optional 指可选择的 非常制的 像是 Registration for this website is optional 这个网站没有强制注册 另外补充一个反义形容词 compulsory, 
C O M P U L S O R Y. Compulsory, 指义务性的，强制的。举例来说 ，Military service is compulsory for both male and female Israeli citizens. 以色列的男女公民皆需强制性服兵役。And today we're talking about building an emergency kit in our dialogue focus and part one, making a list of kit items. So we have two people, Kyle and Rita, who are discussing the merits of building an emergency kit. So before they move on to actually building this kit, they talk about the merits of doing so. So when you talk about the merits of something, you're talking about the advantages or the positive qualities of that thing. So They're saying, "What good will come out of building an emergency kit? Should we even bother doing it? What are the merits of it?" Yeah, what's the point? What are the benefits of doing so? Of building an emergency kit? Now, Kyle says, "Man, that article on natural disaster management really got me thinking about how unprepared we are." Man. By the way, he just used that word for emphasis. He's not saying that Rita is a male. People do speak like this sometimes. They might say, "Oh man," or "Man," or something like that, and then the rest of the sentence continues, even though that part of the sentence really has nothing to do with the content of the sentence that follows. It's just there for emphasis. So, anyways. Apparently, Kyle read an article on natural disaster management. So here we have the word disaster. A disaster is a terrible thing that happens that was unplanned and might have caused a whole lot of damage or ruin to somebody or some group of people or to something. Right, and natural disaster could refer to an earthquake, a typhoon, or a tornado, flooding. So it's something that causes destruction on a big level and maybe injury or even deaths. So I could say, for instance, the airplane disaster was caused by a broken engine. In this case, it's not a natural disaster; it's a disaster caused by a technical malfunction. And then Rita says, "I know, we should put together." An emergency kit, which makes sense. She knows they're unprepared, so they should do something. There you go. By the way, when you put something together in this particular situation, you gather the items that you need and you put them in one place. And the idea is that you keep them stored in that one place. Right. So, for instance, I could say the scientists put together the data to produce the report, which means they took the various data that they gathered from different sources, different experiments. They put all of that together in order to produce this report. So, Rita says we should put together this emergency kit because what if a freak accident occurs? Now, a freak accident is an accident that is highly unusual that doesn't happen. Happen often, so a car accident in Taipei is not a freak accident. It's a bad thing, but it's definitely it's not considered freak. A freak accident would be something like if a piano fell on your head while you're walking across the street. That's almost impossible, but it happened, so it's a freak or an unusual accident. There you go. Do you need to be prepared for? All manner of freak accidents, no. But you do need to have an emergency kit for just basic freak accidents, basic disasters that could possibly happen where you live in that place where you live. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, here in Taiwan, you would probably want to be prepared for typhoon. Now, if you lived in Oklahoma. In the central United States of America, would you worry about typhoons? No, but you might worry about tornadoes. So you would have an emergency kit with tornado stuff in it and stuff like that. That's the idea. And Kyle says, "Good idea." Then he says, "I'll put together a checklist, and then we can see what we're missing." And 
Kyle writes the checklist. By the way, I'm a big fan of checklists like this. Make sure you write all of this stuff down, everything. Brainstorm with someone else if you have to. Make sure you write this stuff down, and then as you get the items you need, check them off your list. And that's why they call such a list a checklist. Yes, it's a very organized way of doing things, especially if you have a lot of things to do or a lot of things to buy. If you're working on something, a process that has many steps, you want to write all of that down in a checklist so that you make sure you haven't left anything out. So Kyle and Rita are making a checklist of things that they want to include in their disaster kit, and Kyle goes online and tries to find out what other things should be included in. This list, he says. I looked online, and most websites say that we should have at minimum a three-day supply of water and non-perishable food, a first aid kit, a battery-powered radio, a flashlight, and a multi-tool. Oh, and a whistle. And I'm not joking. You have to have the whistle. It's very important. Let's say you're in Taipei or you're in Hualien. And there is an earthquake, and you're stuck in rubble. A whistle's a great way to alert people that you're stuck somewhere. Okay, they might be able to hear that whistle and then come and get you. Then it says there are also some optional extras, things that oh, you might want to think about putting into your kit, but. They're not totally necessary. That's what it means to be optional. You can choose to use these things or to put these things in your kit or not. It doesn't matter one way or another. Now, non-perishable food. When I think of non-perishable food, I think of canned food. For the most part, if you put canned food in your emergency kit. That food is going to stay fine for a really long time. It won't go bad. That's what it means. If something is non-perishable, it won't go bad on you. Right. So an apple would not be considered non-perishable. Other non-perishable food might include pasta or cookies, crackers, cereal. Although dried pasta is not the best choice if you're in an emergency because you probably won't be able to cook it very easily. So I think the best choice is really canned foods if you want to go with non-perishable food for an emergency. Anyways, Rita says that sounds like a good list. I'd also add a power bank for a cell phone. Good idea, Rita. And Kyle says done. Now let's check to see what we're missing. Rita says we definitely don't have enough bottled water, and we'll have to buy some canned and freeze-dried food too. Let's go shopping this weekend. There you go. By the way, definitely means totally, one hundred percent. Absolutely. So Rita is stating this very, very strongly. We really do not have enough bottled water. We have to get more bottled water. We definitely do not have enough. All right, folks. With that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. When we come back, we'll start reading from part two of this month's dialogue focus lesson called "Buying Kit Items." Buying kit items. Kyle and Rita are at a camping store buying the items they need for their kit. I think we have enough food and water. Do we need anything else? Let's get some energy bars in case we have to leave the house and can't carry canned food. They're calorie dense, so they're perfect for when you're on the move. Sure, throw a few in the cart. Should we also get some water purification tablets? That's a great idea. They should be. Ah, there they are. Cool. What's next? Let's try to find a flashlight and a radio. There are no good radios, but this flashlight looks like it'll do the trick. It has a solar panel, so it'll work even if we run out of batteries. Nice one. And speaking of batteries, we need to get a spare power bank. They're right over there. I'll grab that, and then I think we can head to the checkout. Sounds good.
最后第二部分，我们看到片语 do the trick， 表示发挥作用、凑效。例如 ，The toy is broken right now, but a little bit of glue should do the trick. 这个玩具现在坏了，但只要一点胶水，应该就能修好。另外，补充一个相关片语 work wonders, w o n d e r s, work wonders， 表示有奇效、创造奇迹。我们可以说 getting a massage worked wonders on my sore back. 按摩让我的背痛出奇舒缓了。So we are now going to look at part two of today's lesson: building an emergency kit. And now we're going to talk about buying kit items because before Kyle and Rita have already come up with a list of things that they. Needed to buy. They came up with a checklist, checked what they had already at home, and are planning to buy those items that they don't have. So Kyle and Rita are at a camping store buying the items they need for their kit. And Kyle says, "I think we have enough food and water." They already bought the food and water. So he says, "Do we need anything else?" And Rita says, "Let's get some energy bars in case we have to leave the house and can't carry canned food. In fact, canned food can be very heavy." So they decide to buy some energy bars, which is a very good choice because energy bars can come in very handy. When you're trying to escape a disaster or trying to preserve your energy because you don't know what is going to lie ahead, or if you're running a marathon, for instance. There you go. If you have to leave the house during an emergency, you probably don't want to be encumbered. You probably don't want to have to carry all sorts of heavy stuff like cans filled with food. So, these energy bars, I should say. Really do make sense. They're light. They're easy to carry, and on top of that, they're calorie dense. So they're perfect for when you're on the move. By the way, when we're talking about calories, usually we're talking about the amount of energy to be found in a certain food item. That's how you measure how much energy that's in some food item. The amount of calories that are in it, and it says here that energy bars are calorie dense. That means the bar itself might be small, but there is a lot of calories packed into that. Small bar. The bar is calorie dense, just filled and packed and crammed with calories. Right, and people who want to lose weight often count their calories. Or a nutritionist, a doctor might say, if you want to lose weight, then you should keep your calorie consumption under a certain number. So. An average woman might not want to take in more than two thousand calories a day, or two thousand five hundred calories a day, depending on their weight and their height, if they want to maintain a certain weight. And as for the word dense, a good example would be to think of a pound of feathers and a pound of lead. They both weigh a pound, but the feather will not be as dense as the lead. The lead is denser. Okay, that. Pound of material is contained in a much smaller, smaller volume. Thus, it is more dense. Anyways, moving on. Next, Kyle says, "Sure, throw a few of those、uh, energy bars in the cart." Should we also get some water purification tablets? And Rita says, "That's a great idea. They should be ah." There they are, and Kyle says, "Cool, man. What's next?" And he checks the list. Let's try to find a flashlight and a radio, man. And then they browse the store. And Rita says, "There are no good radios, but this flashlight looks like it'll do the trick." So. They weren't able to find the battery-powered radio that they were looking for, but they were able to find a flashlight. And she says the flashlight looks like it'll do the trick. So to do the trick means to work, to be effective, to fulfill the function that it's supposed to fulfill. I could also say, for instance, if you want to save your dying plant, changing the soil might do the trick because the soil may not be nutritious enough, and the plant is dying because it's 
is not getting enough nutrition. So if you change the soil, it might do the trick of reviving your plant. And Rita says that this flashlight looks like it'll do the trick. It'll function the way that they want it to. Anyways, Rita says it has a solar panel, so it'll work even if we run out of batteries. How about that? Now here we have the word solar. That means of or having to do with the sun. Now there's a word related to this. Lunar, that means of or having to do with the moon. Now you might be wondering, those are weird words. Well, they kind of are. They come from Latin, okay? Sun, solar, moon, lunar. You just need to remember those, folks. Anyways, moving on, Kyle says, nice one. And speaking of batteries, we need to get a spare power bank. They're right over there. Rita says, I'll grab that. And then I think we can head to the checkout. And Kyle says, sounds good. All right, folks, with that, today's lesson is now in the books. And it's time for you guys to hear from the Chinese teacher. Kyle提到一篇关于应对天灾的文章，那一篇文章啊，让他想到他们准备有多么的不充分。好，那么Kyle他是用到got me thinking来表达让我想到什么什么。当我们用get somebody加上动词ing，就可以表达使某人做某事。那么这个句型是强调说，它不是强迫或是命令哦，而是某人他自然产生的反应。假设你在脸书上面看到有人抛了一段发人形式的话，你就突然有些想法，觉得好像要
Luke is trying to lose weight, so he is counting how many calories he eats. Dense. The cake Holly cooked was very dense and chocolatey. Solar. Solar energy is becoming more popular in many countries. Well, this is the end of our program. We hope you had a great time with us today. Hope you can join us again. From all of us here, I'm Helen. I'm Jeff. See, See you next time. time.